a new migrant caravan of up to 7,000 people now passing through Mexico, heading straight for the U.S. southern border. This migrant saying many have no money for food or transport, so they have to get to the U.S. border this way by walking. But as that massive caravan makes its way north, major American cities are struggling to house the ones who've already arrived and are seeking asylum in the U.S. We're having to create new space because we don't have any other space we can access in New York City. This week, New York City opening a new tent city on Floyd Bennett Field in Brooklyn, which could house about 500 families. The sprawling facility features individual rooms outfitted with cots and bassinets and provides electrical outlets and locking doors. But the field it sits on, once a naval air station, is prone to flooding. And some city officials have raised concerns about the fire hazards posed by the cramped living quarters. The nearest fire hydrant is 3,000 feet away. If there was a major fire at that location, there wouldn't be enough water for the fire department to um, quickly put that fire out. However, New York City officials have denied those claims as they try to make space for what they estimate is just under 70,000 migrants in New York's shelter system. In terms of the fire safety issues, these are not fire traps and these are not death traps. Every single space has issues that we need to address and mitigate, and we work very, very closely with all of our agency partners to mitigate those things. And we're doing that with the fire department. In Chicago, as the cold winter months approach, city officials are building a tent city with winterized tents in Brighton Park and have plans for another in this vacant lot on the south side. Chicago's winter are brutal. Play migrants in the tent in such conditions, nothing short of inhumane. The Brighton Park facility drawing backlash from Chicago residents at a heated community meeting last week. What does housing look like for our own residents who are houseless nests? Who, who need affordable housing, our seniors, uh, those resources that asylum seekers are getting in one place, our residents have to go multiple places for. And in Massachusetts, officials announcing a wait list for arriving migrants after the state reaches its fast approaching shelter system capacity of 7,500 people. Massachusetts Governor Healy also announcing a work authorization clinic for migrants in those emergency shelters next month. There are so many steps that um, they can review to make sure that the applications won't be denied or rejected for things that can be fixed on site. Cities push past capacity with more migrants appearing to be on the way. And Guavanegas joins us now from our bureau in Miami. Guad, I understand there's an update on the southern border as well, the, that razor wire barrier that Texas put uh, in the water to stop, stop migrants from crossing the Rio Grande. Aaron, there is, and everything that happens in Texas affects the rest of the country when it comes to the migrants because most of them arrive through Texas. So uh, we know that with the border barrier in the water, the buoys uh, judge uh, is overlooking that. Well, Court of Appeals is overlooking uh, that decision, uh, whether Texas will be able to keep those in the water or remove them. But there's also a decision that has been made with the other lawsuit. Texas sued the federal government after Border Patrol agents were cutting the razor wire fence that's been installed in the border as well. But uh, even though the judge has ordered, uh, the decision was that the judge ordered Border Patrol agents to stop cutting the fence, there is an exception where they can cut it if a migrant is in a medical emergency or under medical distress, which is why they say they've been cutting it. So it doesn't really change much on the ground, but it's just another chapter in this battle between Texas and the federal government as the humanitarian crisis continues south of the border, Aaron, with the migrants still making their way to the U.S.-Mexico border. All right, Guad Venegas for us in Miami tonight. Guad, thank you. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.